be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here, welcoming you to another episode of Rabbit Trail, along with myself and my partner in crime, Max Masano. Hey, Max, how you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing great. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, we had a really good week this week. It's really nice and warm here in Cali, and uh, today's supposed to be a really nice warm day, so uh, we're going to go out and uh, hopefully hit the pool for a little bit, uh, a little bit later on this afternoon, um, but uh, it's it's doing fine. We're doing all good. It's uh, good, good people are coming. People are coming back. Hallelujah. And how are you doing? You're packing, right? Yes, I'm getting ready to move to the Midwest. Yes, freezing, sir. Freezing cold Antarctic Boston. Yeah. Well, some people said you're actually moving to the real Midwest, you know? They, yes. You know, my wife's from Chicago and they call that the Midwest. And if you look on the map, you kind of go, well, it's not really the Midwest. But uh, there's a big controversy about that so you'll be in uh, st louis missouri yeah yeah and you'll be at the lake house so that sounds right. living uh, living my new life of leisure not yeah. really but <laughs> are you going to be fishing yeah fishing? who knows you're going to be at the lake that's right you know? i want to see some pictures of you on the dock right with, with my your, uh your fishing my, my fly hand. fishing hat my yeah. pole yeah, absolutely. One of those classic Americana photographs, you know. <laughs> exactly. Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell. Yes, indeed. All right. So, so here we are. And for those of you who are watching us for the first time, uh, this is Rabbit Trails episode 15. And we are uh, excited about that. Can you believe that, dude? 15 That's crazy. under our belt. Uh, tell you a little bit about this program. The reason it's called Rabbit Trails is because... Um, we know sometimes when it comes to hair color and conversations about hair color and conversations about our industry in general, um, we as hairdressers, because we have so many thoughts going through our heads, we end up a lot of times going down rabbit trails or rabbit holes. And uh, because we know that's possible to happen, sometimes those uh, journeys uh, turn out successful. Sometimes those journeys are not so successful. So we thought, what a better name for a program than rabbit trails so that gives us actually gives us a uh, opportunity to go down a rabbit trail and we may do that today in this program we also are focused on helping you as a salon professional our goal is to help you achieve more success in this industry and the way that we do that and especially in the world of hair color is by giving you information that is scientifically based that is based on fact and that you can use to empower yourself and help you make a decision that works best for you. Um, we never try to be condescending. Uh, we are not here to try and make fun of people, um, but we are here to talk about truth. Uh, one of the 10 tenets that we operate under at Guru Nation is integrity. And uh, this morning, I just had to refresh my mind about integrity <laughs> because of the last 48 hours. <laughs> and the one thing about integrity that I do know is doing the right thing, even when nobody's watching. And so for us, it is about that. Um, we talk about information on social media that may be controversial. We give you our opinion as a company based on the facts that we've established on whether, you know, how that information is either accurate or skewed. Sometimes the truth doesn't taste good. Sometimes it tastes like vinegar, to quote Sandra Bullock from one of her movies. Um, but that's the way that it is. And uh, I always say, you know, if, if you're an educator and your information is on our show, um, along with being educating, you know, we get all the applause for being an educator and we are a lot of people want to do that uh, for the popularity and things like that. But along with that comes a responsibility. And so we actually will call out the things we see that we believe are not accurate or that are misleading or may give uh, false information to the salon professionals that are working in the salon. So uh, 
that's our waiver before we start our program. <laughs> Max, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, I think you covered all the bases. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so where do we begin today, my friend? Well, I think we should give a little backstory on uh, the, the most current uh, social media scuffle, <laughs> we'll call it, which yeah. wasn't really that much of a scuffle, but it was just enough to get a few people and their feathers uh, ruffled up. Yeah. You know what? Um, I got in trouble. Uh, what can I say? Um, bad Dennis, bad Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, so uh, there was a particular photograph that was in an Instagram post made by someone who I'm sure is a super talented educator and hairdresser, um, but it actually ended up being sent to both Dennis and myself from other educators in the field. And it was basically a side-by-side -side before and after of a head of hair uh, that had been toned and the starting level, it, it basically looked like a level seven copper to me. And the ending level was this beautiful um, lavender kind of pastel-y pearly blonde. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it was basically saying that it was just done with the application of a toning formula. So it wasn't lightened further beyond that coppery stage. It was just this one and done toner, basically, that turned this orange hair into a pastel blonde. And when I saw the picture and, you know, one of my colleagues sent it to me, they were like, what do you think about this? And I was like, well, this looks like this is not something that's possible in one step. Right. And when Dennis saw the picture, <laughs> take it away, Dennis. Yeah, when I saw the picture, I could not help myself. Those of you who know me, who watch this show regularly, or you've been in my classes, <laughs> you know how passionate I am about truth and honesty. And I've had these kinds of discussions. Oh, Max brought his hunting dog with him. <laughs> I, uh, I've had these discussions with, with many people in the industry. Uh, is it, you know, for me, when you hold a position uh, of trainer, educator, guest artist, facilitator, whatever you call yourself, whatever name badge that you give yourself, it's a great thing, but you also have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to be truthful and honest with what you're, what you're, what you are articulating, or what you are inferring, and um, without context to explain why there might have been a ver such a extreme variation in two photographs, and because we know today that on social media many photographs are filtered, many photographs are photoshopped. We know that. So it's not that we're unaware. We know that that's a possibility. And so when you see something that just doesn't make sense, or as my grandpa used to say, if it walks like a duck and it sounds like a duck, it's probably a duck. Um, you know, those kinds of things that, you know, you have to say, wait a minute, this is not, not right. And for me, my concern is not about the person who did it. It doesn't matter. It's about the young or the new hair colorist who is trying to grasp the mastery of hair color and who is learning in bits and pieces on social media that sees this and sees a formula posted. This was supposed to be the successful formula and then they try it. And they may have never used the brand, whatever brand that was, they may have never used the brand themselves. So their first experience with that brand of hair color is that formula they saw on social media, and then it doesn't work. 
Well, the first thing we do, because it's our habit in our industry, we have been inundated with this, brainwashed with this, we blame the product. And so now that manufacturer is affected because now they may have lost a potential sale of that product based upon a new person, first time experience with that formula they saw on social media that wasn't the true formula or wasn't accurate in the first place. Can you see how one posting could affect a new colorist, a manufacturer? <laughs> it's like the trickle down theory. Sure. So I'm concerned about that because I want people to have a more successful journey than it has been for people in my age group. Remember, you know, <laughs> when I went to beauty school, <laughs> you know, we had minimal education other than what we had in beauty school. We had to go seek it out. You know, we had to machete our way through yeah. the world of hair color. Today, you have it any, you turn on your phone, you've got color information. You go to your computer, you've got color information. <clears throat> you know, it's everywhere. You know, now you have the party line clubhouse. So if you're not, not happy watching it visually, you can get on the phone and listen to people chatter about it all yeah. night long, not just during the day, but 24 seven, Yeah. you know? So, um, so I posted like always, and I posted it on my big board. Now listen, when the big board comes out, that means that I'm a little concerned. Okay. So for those of you that see me post the big board, when I do that, I'm trying to really make sure that we get clarity. So I posted that big board. And of course, um, never mentioned the person, never mentioned anything about them other than they have a lot of followers. They do. Um, they are obviously an influencer because that's what they're doing. They're influencing you. <laughs> And uh, I got called out on that because someone saw that post <clears throat> and because they knew that person, they were, a, and they got called out too because they supported that person. So it was a, it was a, it was a, some, a mess. Although it was a storm in a teacup, <laughs> it was a mess. And so um, what I, what I wanted to do is just hopefully help them understand is that number one, I'm not going to change. Because that's what we stand for. That's what Guru Nation stands for. If you don't believe me, go to our website, www.gurunation.net. And you can see our mission. It's posted on our website. You can see our tenants that we operate by. And we live by those tenants. Uh, we believe in truth. And I am watching you. I want you to know that. I'm not going to call you out by name, but I'm definitely when we're when we are giving out information that's not accurate, <coughs> then I'm going to call you out on it. Now, you have to know that sometimes I'm wrong. Not not always. I usually I check my facts first, but sometimes I'm wrong. You can ask my wife; she'll tell you I'm wrong a lot. So tomorrow. We are going to do that, that same formula. We are going to do it on a mannequin head that we have already lightened. And then we're going to post that video. And if I am wrong, I will actually admit that I'm wrong. But if I'm right, it's going to be a mic drop. <laughs> How's that, the man? God, the godfather of hair color has spoken. <laughs> You know, it, it, look, we're not trying to, we just, we have to stop listening to all the craziness. <clears throat> you know, Max, here's what's really funny. The other night I was on a call in Clubhouse and <clears throat> I was on, I was invited to be on this call because one of the speakers was a chemist and she works for it doesn't matter who she works for. She's a chemist, but she does work for a major color manufacturer. And they ask her a question about some of those things 
that we try to stand against, that we try to tell you not true. And um, someone asked her, they said, well, they have heard many times that when you are trying to remove in really inaccurate language, we use it in our industry, that's hairdressers speak because you never remove anything from the hair. When you're trying to break down direct dyes, that it's recommended that you don't use bleach because bleach will drive the direct dyes deeper in the hair. Now, you've all heard that, right, Max? People have heard mm -hmm. that all the time. Well, the chemist says, no, that's impossible. That's impossible because bleach is a decomposing compound. <coughs> well, what does that mean? If I take direct dye and I drop a drop of direct dye in my bowl of bleach, probably in about five to 10 minutes, there'll be no more, no direct dye left. Okay. okay. So you say, well, then why do I have that faint shadow in the hair? It's because you've stained the cuticle. Mm -hmm. The cuticle is, is semi, uh, semi permeable. It is also translucent, which means you can see through it. So when you look at a hair strand, you're not looking at the cortex. You're looking at the cortex through cuticle layers. Right. And so when I color hair or when I lighten hair, I'm not lightening the cuticle. I'm lightening the cortex. So I'm lightening the hair underneath a stained cuticle. So as the hair gets lighter, it makes perfect sense that the cuticle will look lighter and lighter and lighter, and sure. it'll have that faint of color. Now, that's an actual cosmetic chemist who works creating hair color. To me, that person carries a huge amount of credibility weight. <clears throat> I'm just a hairdresser that has a degree in chemistry. I mean, honestly, I mean, I've worked in the laboratories, but I didn't work only as a chemist. I worked as a hairdresser working with chemists. So I want people to kind of understand that is that her, her credibility is just much higher than mine, even though I think mine's pretty good. Yeah. So how many people are going to believe her? I'll guarantee you that there are people that are out there that are still probably on Saturday. You probably heard the story. Don't use bleach. You'll be driving the color deeper in the hair. So that <coughs> inaccurate message gets out there. Uh, in fact, um, Max, I got to share this with you. I got to share this with you. This came from... Uh, someone, one of our followers, and she's in Florida. And she says to me, hey, Dennis, I wanted to share with you the magic formula for removing direct dyes. I was invited to hang out at a school. That's all she's going to say. <laughs> at a school last week. And in this school... This is what they teach using clear with 40 volume for 30 to 35 minutes, shampoo, dry, and then you bleach the hair for 10 minutes with 20 volume and you watch the magic happen. That's exactly what they said. She said, which it worked on the purpley part of the color <coughs> of the direct dye but made the hair color, made the green a mint color. Thought you might find that interesting. Okay, so then I said, well, thanks for the info. How did they explain away the miss? Because they missed on the green. How did they explain away the miss on the green? And they said, they present a miracle formula, then attitude <laughs> is that you win some, you lose some. <laughs> That's that's quite the miracle. So, um, so uh, how do you deal with that? <laughs> it's like, well, again, <laughs> I think it's, it's all about the context. Right. So, okay. Clear is a very general term. Right. Are they using an ammoniated clear? 
Are they using a demi clear? And even if you're, so let's say for the sake of it, they're using an ammoniated clear, which typically is about the same as, wouldn't you say like a level 10? Yeah. Permanent hair color. Yeah. They're all kind of formulated about with that, that sort of level of alkalinity. Right. Um, and you're mixing it with developer. So you're, right. you're releasing oxygen, which we all know fractures the, the pigment in the hair. Right. So, you know, you're basically doing what you would be doing with lightener, but you're doing it with ammoniated clear and 30. Right. And then you're going over it with lightener. With bleach. <laughs> when you could have probably just gone over it with lightener to begin with, you know, and possibly yeah. saved yourself, you know, a, a whole lot of extra steps. And then you tell your client, well, you win some, you lose some. Right. Sorry <laughs> that your, your hair is mint green. Sorry, you're now you're green. You were purple, but now you're green. You know, and I have a feeling what happened was as they lightened the hair, that hair, the cortex was contributing more yellow to that purpley hue. Mm -hmm. And so when it started contributing more yellow and then you, the violet disappeared because it's a weaker part of that. So now they had a little bit of blue left and blue and yellow make what color? Green. Green. So, so those are the kinds of things <clears throat> that you you see on social media all the time you know it's crazy i mean look um i i get a note from another forum and i look when i see things on a forum that look to me like quicksand <laughs> you, if you don't know what quicksand is you need to google it <laughs> but quicksand the minute you step in it <laughs> It sucks you in. It sucks you in. And I'll pass those by. Then some people will tag me under these things. And I go, nope, looks like quicksand to me. I it's, choose. It's a rabbit trail play. that'll kill you. Right. <laughs> so there's this formula going round. And it says that if you want to make Shades EQ, <laughs> you can make it by mixing two parts of clear doesn't say what kind of clear with your permanent hair color and then adding conditioner and then processing it with seven volume developer. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, because since I was on the team that made that product, that there's no way that product is made that way. <clears throat> so what do you make when you do that? You make some sort of a distortion of permanent hair color. Doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's certainly not <laughs> Shades EQ. Uh, but how do these people come up with these crazy thought processes? Um, like the one I shared with you, Max, before we started, you know? Blanket statement. Those are things that drive me nuts. Without any context, a blanket statement like freshly lightened hair rejects warmth and accepts ash. That's absolutely not true. That's not an accurate statement. Right. Are you telling me I can't tone freshly lightened hair with a warm toner? We do it all the time in the salon. We do it all the time, <laughs> you know? But imagine again, you're a new colorist and you're trying to learn about toning, <clears throat> which now we have all this new vocabulary, pre-tone, overtone and then people are asking about toners like uh they're saying well where do i buy a toner tone a toner is not a product now there's manufacturers who make things that they label as toners but toning is a service it's a behavior right you can tone with a direct dye you can tone with a demi-permanent color you can tone with a semi-permanent color. You can tone with a permanent color. You can tone with a toning shampoo. <coughs> it doesn't matter. Toning is a service. So it's you know, a verb. It's an action. Right. It's something it's an you do to the right. hair. 
Right. So these are the things I think <clears throat> that concern me most importantly. How about you, Max? Yeah. And I think just to like uh, kind of knock it home, especially for n- not just our, our regular viewers, but if you're newer to the industry and you're watching this, you're clearly you're here because you are, you know, trying to sort out truth versus tales. And, you know, the, the first permanent hair color was created in 1908 and it is now 2021. And really not a lot has changed in the world of hair color. So if you really understand the basics of how hair color works, how hair responds when different categories of hair color products are placed on it, it will really sort of behoove anyone that when they're in these sort of situations where you see like this, the crazy before and after on Instagram or you hear about the magic formula, you know, you'll already know based on knowing these sort of foundational principles about hair and the chemistry of hair color and hair science, what can and can't be done. Because, you know, it's, you know, still the same stuff. Now, conditioners have improved over the years. Um, You know, bells and whistles and technology have gotten a little better over the years, but the the hair color that they were doing in the 50s, that chemical process that happens when you mix the color up and put it on the hair, it's the same chemical process that happens today. Right. You know, there, right, because there's no medium- separate lifting and depositing cycle. It's all happening at the same time, you know? Yeah, because your medium is really the same that, as it was in 1908. Mm-hmm. <coughs> it's the and, hair. And that medium is really kind of unpredictable from person to person Absolutely. you you're given a a set of parameters to work with when you're working with fine hair we know fine hair has a tendency to lighten a little quicker absorb color a little deeper but also lose it a little quicker because of space there are certain sort of rules we teach for coarse hair as well and medium hair, but, but it's also not the end all be all, you know, as you teach, you know, hair color is the science of precise estimation, (laughs) which means that there's always going to be something, you know, that, that may not add up like in that level of predictability, you know, and which is why we, we do what we do. So, it's like my mentor always said, Max, he said, we can only predict what hair will most often do. Right. And not what it always does. Yeah. It's like Just simply being prepared for the curveball is what makes you a better colorist so that you don't freak out. Exactly. Like, like you'll always know hair color will not lift cool. Which you know? will not. <laughs> you will you will never wake up one morning and go, man, I put that, you know, 11 ash on uh, my client's level two new growth and she pulled so blue. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, someone's level eight, you know, yellow orange might be closer to orange and farther away from yellow. Right. You know, if they have coarse hair as opposed to someone with finer hair, their yellow orange might be a little more yellow, a little less orange. They're still falling in that level eight zone, but you might have to adjust your formula. What, what you would use on one person isn't necessarily what. And it could actually be on the same head too. Absolutely. Cause sometimes you're dealing with multiple hairs, right? Heads of hair on the same head, you know? Right. Yeah, so it's like, why didn't it all lift evenly? Well, possibly. <laughs> One hair strand has more melanin in it than the other because we know, according to biology, 
that melanin, melanocytes, that's totally random. Yeah, it's not consistent in right. every hair. Right. So, so again, you guys, just, just bringing it back to the science of it. Right. You know, it's, it's like, keep, keep getting that foundational information. Right. Because that's what is really going to set you up for success. And it's also what's going to be the most empowering to you where you can look at something and go, mm, I, I don't think that's right. Or I don't necessarily agree right. with that. And, and again, another one of part of our tenets is about trust. You know, we honor and value the trust that you have in us. Yeah. I mean, many of you who follow us, follow us because you trust what we say. And, and we value that. We, we understand that that's fragile. And we don't ever want to cross over that. And by having integrity as part of our one of our tenets, we will never do that because we will always be aware that the people who follow us are the people who trust us. And because of that, we want to give you the best, most honest, most factual information that we can. But we want to have fun when we do it. You notice we laugh a lot yeah. <laughs> because we are a funny group of individuals as hairdressers. You guys have to know that we're funny people sometimes and we don't realize how funny we are and, and we do strange things. You know, <laughs> I know you see people in the back room and they're sitting there talking to the color, right? Have you seen them? They're, they're going, Oh, if I use that, what are you doing? Nothing, nothing. I'm formulating. Or, or we do things like, you know, a client comes in and we're going to use six in and we go, we have to go to the swatch book. And look at 6N just to make sure that it's still where it was last Wednesday when I used it on someone else. You know, these are like our little habits that, you know, and we get in the back room and we formulate um, by emotion. You know who that person is. You might be that person. Mm -hmm. I was <clears throat> half ounce, quarter ounce, one ribbon inch, one dollop, one drop, one splash. <laughs> We're Don't forget funny. the cap full. The cap full, yes. We're funny people. And that's what we love about our industry. We are emotional human beings that love creating with our hands. We love the fact that we literally change people's lives. You do. You'll have someone who comes into you for the first time. Maybe they're a little inhibited. Maybe they have a little lack of self-confidence and you do your magic on them and they look in that mirror and suddenly it's like they have come from a caterpillar to a butterfly and their confidence starts to exude itself. And you say, wow, she really changed yeah. or he really changed. That's what we do. That's what we it's are, about. Yeah. That's what it's about. <clears throat> we are emotional because when we've created what we think looks good, and one of our teammates says, yeah, I don't like it. It kind of hurts our feelings. I know when I was learning to dress hair, I'm telling you, Max, I had a hard time judging balance and I would work really hard, you know, to put a chignon in the right place. And then <laughs> somebody come along, they go, oh, that looks like a tumor. It doesn't look right. You need to change the balance in it. So we have to learn to laugh at ourselves we have to learn that sometimes we don't articulate our ideas successfully um, simply because we get real excited and we don't use the proper words. And like I always say, we send in words we receive in pictures. There's many times that you probably like me, like Max have said stuff. And as it, as it's coming out of your mouth, you want to reach out and grab it. And put it back in, go, whoop, whoop, erase, erase, erase. <laughs> Reel it back in. Reel, Reel it back, back in. Back in. Uh, but that's what makes our industry fun, exciting. And I wouldn't have chosen to be in any other type of industry. Um, it has been a wonderful business. But if you're in a position of training and teaching people, you have to be honest. The truth is really pretty exciting. You don't have to have a fabulous, amazing story. The truth itself is pretty exciting. I, look, <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times I've done a class where I did three hours of theory 
And then in the afternoon, we did workshop, right? And in the theory portion, I'm saying that, you know, if you mix blue and red, you get this, blah, 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 blah. You know, and people are sitting there going, yeah, 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 whatever. So now in the workshop, we run into a scenario where, uh-oh, the hair goes sideways. And so I say, grab me some of this, and I put it in the hair, and I fix it. And they go, oh, my God, that's magic. No, it's not magic. It's exactly what I was telling you at the three-hour theory class. But now you just visually get to see it happen, right. and suddenly it becomes magic. And so... Um, those are the things I think are important. And um, I'll continue to fight for you uh, to find you the truth. Um, I'm sure Max is going to do that too. That's the reason Max and I do these programs together because we are like-minded and uh, we both believe that we want to leave this industry in a better place than it was when we got here. And the only way we can do that is by giving you a head start. Yeah. So and 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 let's just say stay tuned for some really interesting uh classes we're gonna have yes. coming down the pipeline. Yes, we are working diligently on some classes and uh, all of those things to uh, give you some some more information. I think you'll uh, you'll like it. So Max, I think we've been here uh long enough for today. Yeah. I think it's time for uh, us to take a break. Yes. And uh, you can. And I'm a chopper. You're, yeah. So uh, look, yeah, we appreciate you watching us on YouTube. If you're watching, um, thank you so much for subscribing. And thank you for the feedback. We're getting so much great feedback from folks saying that they enjoy our programs. And um, that makes it really worthwhile for us. Um, <clears throat> but remember, you can subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, also, you can follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. Uh, we also invite you to visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Uh, click on our educational tab, and you can see classes that we offer that are pre recorded. You can download and watch them. And we're going to be adding several things to them. Um, Due to uh, some conversations that I had with Max uh, last uh, couple of weeks, we have changed up one of our programs, Formulation Foundation. We now currently, at this moment, are offering it in two forms. One, you can take the entire class in one session, but we also know that some people have a hard time digesting all that information at once. So we've broken it down into education in small bites. So there are four segments to Formulation Foundation. They are now offered as individual segments on our, on our educational page. Those are 90 minute classes and uh, you can sign up for one of those and it's a 90 minutes at a class. Once you've accomplished all four of those, that means you've completed Formulation Foundation. We send you a certificate and we put you into a private Facebook forum where you can spend another 30 days, you know, working with other people, asking questions, getting, um, you know, access to other information. So we're trying to make it uh, accessible for you. We are also planning on putting it in a webinar form for those people that are self learners that don't think they need a trainer or a teacher, you know, and I respect that. That's cool. If you can take this information and run with it, God bless you. Uh, that'll be in webinar form. So it'll be download, downloadable. Is that a word, Max? Downloadable? I think so. Okay. Yeah. It'll be you, down get, you get a replay for, what is it, 90 days? Yeah. Is that how they work? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't actually download it, but it's accessible. It's accessible. Right. And you can, you can watch, learn that way as well. So we're trying to make that all happen for you. We are planning right now tentatively to do uh, our first live program uh, in July, it would be July uh, 10th and 11th. And it will be our Pinnacle program, which is a six day program. Uh, you come into California for two days, then you go home for a month, you come back for another two days, you go home for a month, you come back for a third set of two day program. Uh, Pinnacle is one of our premier programs. It is actually six days of education. Um, 
we do pinnacle for hair color right now and we do pinnacle for public uh, for facilitation so we bring in trainers and we help them learn how to facilitate information uh, successfully so uh, pretty much that's what we're doing uh, Max and I are working on other programs uh, you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of the things that our Max is doing. You'll see those up on our website soon. We also have Erica Blancet, who is doing our Spanish uh, education. So we are now a bilingual company. <clears throat> she already has one video up, and uh, we'll be getting more there later. So we're busy. We are busy. So um, it has been fun. I thank you all so much for being with us. And oh. Oh, there it is, Max. It's time to go. I hear the chopper. All right. Hi, right, brother. I will see you in the clearing for all of you. Have a wonderful weekend. And as always, from my to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. How about you, Max? Also out. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. See you all soon. Take care.